first of all, I, I was I was supposed to be talking about disrupting the status quo, but I'm going to give uh, when it comes to our perceptions of space, space travel, and what we're capable of doing in the field. But the fact of the matter is, uh, I have been spending the last week in the hospital with um, a friend of mine, who um, is right now in a coma. Um, she she entered this coma a few hours after I left farmhouse uh, last Sunday. Um, and this experience has changed my perception on uh, how we perceive ourselves and how we perceive the world and interact with it. And um, I have come to realize that our egos are getting in the way of us innovating in any sector. Um, our egos have made it so that we hold too close to our hearts the things that we think we have created and can therefore only be ours. And um, we are part of the reason that every single thing we see around us is broken. Everything. We're talking the economy, the FDA. We're talking about how we raise our families. Broken. We're talking about our healthcare system, um, who we put in place as our uh, proxies or our, um, what is that called, uh, your, your uh, power, like who has your power of attorney when you are in a, in a place where you're completely incapacitated. Um, we in this country have, a, you know, and I'm, uh, when I say ego, I, I can't, um, I don't remember the psychological definition of ego, you know, like I took all those classes and that's great. I'm talking about that ego, which, you know, when you, when you, when you value something or when you think something is only yours and um, no one else can come in and take it from you um, and, and you believe that only you have the right to access something that you created or only you have the right to build upon something, um, that ego which tells you that there isn't abundance, that, um, that everyone is out there um, to make a profit and therefore, you know, uh, profit's bad. That ego, you know, I, I heard the talk right now and I disagree with a lot of that. Um, profit's great. Profit's awesome. Because if you aren't turning a profit, if you're not creating value in this system, um, you're essentially trying to break down other things, but not put anything in place to take its place. If you're breaking the system down, we're just running around willy-nilly with like no, uh, what's the word, um, uh, uh, structure. And I'm not saying that structure has to be mandated. We can create that structure. and. We need to realize that our egos, our collective egos, are actually getting in the way of empowering ourselves to go forth and create value. You're all engineers, I think, right? Pretty much software engineers. How, how many of you have uh, something like a dream that like you, every fiber of your being wishes that you could do that? Like for me, every fiber of my being wished I could go into space. Like ever since I was a little kid, and unfortunately John Bender isn't here right now, but I went to high school with John Bender um, in Tucson, Arizona, and he works here at Farmhouse. And I think he probably came to like my uh, to my house, like to work on like little projects and stuff, whatever. And um, I had above my bed like a, a a picture of Andromeda Galaxy. And since I was like 12 or 13, I was like, I'm gonna go to space one day. It's gonna be really, really awesome. But I never became an engineer. I never took any classes that would uh, make me uh, a contender to become an astronaut. Um, you know, I, I'm not in the Air Force, nothing to that degree. Um, but uh, I have worked on my dream for since I was that age in a different way. And that different way is taking all the things that I see that are broken around me, the financial institution, the financial industry, um, health care, um, uh, privatized, uh, well, rather, government institu uh, instituted space programs, um, and am attempting to revamp and rebuild them in ways that they're structurally sound and that um, anyone can participate. Who has a dream that they have had since they were young that um, encompasses every fiber of their being? 
And how many people are, you, are working towards that right now? Diligently, yeah? That's, you guys, some of you guys are smiling when you're like, yeah, I'm working on it. <laughs> I, I have to say that every day I wake up and I'm like, oh my fucking God, I cannot believe like, I'm as close to this space community as I am right now um, because it's, it's pretty amazing. Um, let's talk about this idea of, of, of what I heard in the last talk. Um, how many of you guys have heard of Bitcoin? That's, that's kind of awesome. You guys are a, a little bit of a, a different kind of group. Uh, usually I, <laughs> I, I come into, you know, like cocktail parties and stuff, and people are like, what do you do? And I'm like, I disrupt things. <laughs> um, and that doesn't really resonate very well with people. Okay, uh, I'll tell you a little story. Um, Barring you know the whole like disrupt healthcare and 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 all that, um, Bitcoin was really really awesome. I ended up working um, with a team of people. Uh, if you know Bitcoin, you might know Trade Hill. Um, we told Trade Hill that we wanted to create a product for them. Three people, I I was one of them, uh, created a startup called uh, which was a a mobile to mobile payment system. It was called Bitcoin.com because we got enough funding to actually buy the domain, and uh, we were amazing. We were really really great. Um, we, you know pitched to some amazing people. They're called the Founders Fund. They loved us, and they asked us to pivot our platform to incorporate all currencies. So we we're talking about exchanging euro and transacting in yuan and like uh, divvying up sheep. Like we could actually pay for ice cream bars in sheep because we just geolocated the data. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> no. Um, and and we created an amazing system that was brought down in part by the Occupy movement. We created value, really awesome value, that could have gone forth and been a platform for uh, when the, the, the possibility that this economy might tank in the next like, uh, you know, couple of years in some way. We created a platform by which people were used to transacting, uh, hopefully would become used to transacting in things other than the US dollar, and if, in fact, the economy did collapse, then they would be able to use um, the financial systems that were already placed in place in other countries, other fiat money, or you know, lo people people have value in gold, or if if they have chickens, they have value in chickens, or whatever it is. We put that system in place, and we were brought down a by the current financial system, which we were battling against. We found it to be broken, which is why we created the platform to begin with, but we could not. Our hands were tied completely behind our backs because Occupy Movement decided that they wanted us to become their martyrs and so um, because they wanted our system so bad because we were working outside of the current financial system that we got to the point where the FBI was a come and knocking and I would have spent five years in jail. And the idea is, do I want to go down as a martyr and spend five years in jail for a movement that I somewhat believe in, but you know, would like to work outside and, and fix, create solutions for all the problems that they see? You know, do I want to become that martyr, or do I want to go create solutions? And you guys need to realize, you can create solutions, and you should realize you are so, you're brilliant. You're here. So obviously, you see something's fucked up around you, or you want to create value, you need to realize that you don't have to work in an in industry to be able to completely revamp it. And that's where I'm saying our egos get in the way. Our egos get in the way of us moving forward and innovating together. Because when I created, when I helped create that system, I knew that there was going to be other people who were going to come up and be able to take that system and do better than I could who were more knowledgeable, but at least I put things in place for it to work. Good enough for other people to garner attention. Um, I, I am always heartbroken when I hear about, um, let me go back to this coma thing. This is what, what instigated this. I am heartbroken when uh, my room, my, my, one of my best friends is, is laying, and she's my best friend. I've only known her a couple months, but she's my best friend now because we see things so similarly. She worked in the fashion industry, and she loves space so much, and together we created a company called Blackstar. That's my, that's my newest iteration of disrupting shit. 
Right now, I'm, I'm busy trying to disrupt how we view space in this culture so that uh, I, we can go forth and create more engineers who are going to work on these ridiculously large problems that people think um, are too big to try to work on, like getting off this planet, for instance. And what that requires is a paradigm shift first. Now, when my friend is, is lying in a coma and uh, I, I see all the things that are broken in the system, like uh, the fact that her dad is her, her uh, power of attorney, and he doesn't know fuck all about you know, what she wants um, in terms of you know, if she's hanging onto life by a thread, how her medical um, uh, uh, program should fit, like who she is as a person, or um, how... Uh, her company is essentially being murdered by her mother. And uh, when I realize that there's people around who can fix that, like myself, or make sure that uh, she retains the care that she deserves or that she wants, um, and I can't do anything about it because my hands are tied my behind my back because I'm not her power of attorney, I'm not her proxy, um, I, I want to... I, I want to bring down that system, but I'm not going to bring down that system until I have something in place to do it. When I realize that the FDA has fucked over my father because they've taken off the shelves the one diabetic medication that can actually help him and make sure he doesn't you know, lose sensory feeling in his feet because it killed a couple of people. And you know, shit kills people. Cars kill people. Okay? It happens. But they're not giving me the choice or my dad the choice to use those medications I'm going to bring down the fucking FDA, but I'm going to have something in place first. You don't bring down systems without having something in place to take its place. It's better. That's better. Because otherwise, you're just leaving everyone with, the, with their heads cut off um, and running around. If you have the capability or if you see, have a vision and you see something needs to be fixed, then fix it, please. There, there's tons that needs to be fixed. But please don't run around thinking that breaking systems is the, is the only way that you're going to get your voice heard. Because the fact of the matter is, if you want your voice heard, go create value. And software engineers are the future. You guys, you guys, will, you guys can iterate, create quickly, do it, fail a million times, and create again. But I just want to leave you with the fact that um, please, if you see something broken, realize you have the power to fix it. Nothing's too big. And if anyone tells you you're crazy, um, smack them in the face and tell them it's from me.